This is WNCT, 9 on your side, News at 11. A bill moving through the state's General Assembly would force sheriffs to cooperate with ICE. Hear what a sheriff in the East tells 9 on your side. And tonight, Representative Candy Smith participated in her first town hall meeting since taking office. Our Dylan Huffman reports. And Marines are recognized for their hurricane relief efforts. We take you to an appreciation dinner in Onslow County. Good evening, I'm Shayla Reeves. Thank you for joining us. Ken Watling is off tonight. A bill is moving forward and it impacts sheriffs in our state. The measure requires sheriffs in all 100 North Carolina counties to report the legal status of in immigrant inmates to the federal government and honor ICE detainer requests. The request can be used to hold criminal suspects up to 48 hours. Craven County Sheriff Chip Hughes says most sheriff's offices already comply. The bill would require all to do the same. It would probably require them to um, do what, what they were elected to do and uh, protect the citizenry. Not that they're not, but this is part of it. You know, you don't want to release <coughs> a dangerous criminal back into the community that should be held. The bill passed the House Judiciary Committee yesterday. It must clear at least two other committees before going to the House floor. Representative Candy Smith and Senator Don Davis say, say they're trying to be as tra transparent as possible. That's why they held a town hall meeting tonight. Citizens shared concerns and lawmakers discussed what they're working on in Raleigh. Nottinger Science Dylan Huffman attended the town hall and has the latest. There was a lot to take in from this meeting. Davis and Smith went over all of the bills in Raleigh that they are backing right now. Everything from protecting the military to trying to secure more money for the Brody School of Medicine. How are you working with the Republicans or the Democrat across the aisle, as they would say, to really get some of these things through? One of my things I ran on was working across aisles. And for me to be able to get my amendment done in three months was me working across the aisles. One major part of Thursday's town hall meeting, answering questions. Senator Don Davis and Representative Candy Smith opening up the floor. What do you plan to do about bullying? and suicide prevention in schools. We've been dealing with a suicide prevention bill and you will see that definitely rolled out by Tuesday. Something Gloristine Brown is happy to see. It, it's based on trust and when you're running, you know, for office or anything, you know, that platform, that's what you're putting, that's what you're giving your constituents, that's what you're telling people. Davis and Smith took time to go over several bills that they're working on, things like securing more money for the Brody School of Medicine. But Brody School of Medicine um, really is essential, it's an essential component to making sure we extend health care throughout eastern North Carolina and the rural parts of North Carolina. And several military bills that would help North Carolina become more military friendly. And I often state this is not my house. This is your house when we're in the House of Representatives. There's a living wage bill that would raise minimum wage by 2024. We're going we're gonna to pray, we're going to fight, we're going to see what happens. There was probably around 50 people there tonight, and the people that I spoke with say that they felt like it was a good night. They say that they believe that there are some good things happening in Raleigh. Everybody got one of these pamphlets to fill out. You can put in there kind of what you learned, kind of the questions that you still have, things that Davis and Smith need to keep working on in Raleigh. In the studio, Dylan Huffman at 9 on your side. Tonight at dinner, recognized servicemen and women helping with Hurricane Florence recovery. Nine of your sides, Camila Barco reports from tonight's appreciation event in Richlands. 21 Marines from Camp Lejeune volunteered their time to clean up the town of Richlands after disaster struck. Their efforts did not go unnoticed. A community gathering once again, six months after Hurricane Florence this time honoring the heroic acts of Marines from Camp Lejeune. They don't sit on the sidelines when they know there's trouble, when they know there's some type of grief, when there's chaos, especially within our own communities, they always rise to the challenge. The town of Richlands was one of many devastated by the storm. They couldn't even get in and out of their driveways. We had to build ramps so they could actually get their cars on the other side so they can go to work. Trees on top of houses, roofs torn off. Corporal Erfan Perich and Kristen DeCamp, alongside their brothers and sisters, cleaned more than 100 yards of debris. Most of the homes around this part are actually part like, of older people. They're struggling to move logs, things like that. An act of service that comes second nature for them. 
because I'm from a really small town and that's just what we do. We do so many community relations that most people don't see. Something the Richlands mayor recognized, awarding a certificate of appreciation to the Marines. <laughs> Service volunteer. A small token that can go a long way. Our Marines don't get recognized enough in the community and that's just my opinion. Letters of appreciation also were included from Duke Energy and the command staff. In Richlands, Camila Barco, Nine on Your Side. Meanwhile, all families in need are now invited to stop by the Newburn Church of Christ to receive some post-hurricane relief. The church has spent all week handing out furniture, mattresses, washing machines, and more to families recovering from the storm. So far, they've served over 200 people and expect to clear out supplies by tomorrow. If you're interested, you can stop by at 408 Hancock Street in Newburn. In Craven County, we have a traffic alert for drivers in Newburgh. More work is expected on Highway 70 over the weekend. The State Department of Transportation is working to bring the highway up to interstate standards. Multiple entrance and exit ramps will be closed. Saturday and Sunday, the westbound exit ramps onto Glen Burnie Road and the westbound entrance ramp from Martin Luther King Jr. Boulevard will be closed. The outside right lane between the two ramps is also expected to close. Detours will be in place. Let's go ahead and check in with Chief Meteorologist Jerry Jackson now for a look at our forecast. Jerry, how are things looking out there? So far, so good tonight, Shayla. We've got a fairly clear evening of weather setting up. It's chilly out there, but again, we sometimes expect that even during the spring of the year. Stronger cold front will eventually head our way by the end of this weekend. That'll be our next best chance of rain. Until then, if you have outdoor activities, you've really picked the right week because the weather is going to cooperate with you for sure. Hour by hour precision cast model showing mostly clear skies tonight. Mostly sunny when you wake up tomorrow morning. That'll give way to mostly clear skies again for Friday night. And temperature Temperatures will actually be much warmer tomorrow than what we saw outside today. So it'll finally not only look more like spring, it'll feel more like spring. And you can download our First Alert mobile weather app and see just how warm it'll be for your home location. To give you a general idea, though, tonight, mostly clear overnight lows in the 40s. Tomorrow, most of our inland areas should be in the 70s under sunny skies. It will be a little bit cooler closer to the water. The coast, the outer banks will see highs in the mid 60s. Your boating forecast, small craft advisory will be in effect. Sea is averaging four to six feet, one to two foot with the sounds light chop for the lakes and rivers. Your inland first alert seven day forecast filled with sunshine for Saturday. And at least we start out with sunshine on Sunday, but a chance of rain arriving late in the day. Slight chance of a few residual showers on Monday. 50 50 chance of rain on Tuesday with a new storm system moving in and then moderating temperatures again by Thursday of next week. So if I had to, to pick a forecast for this time of year, that's not a bad one to take. Not at all. And what a way to wrap up the work week yeah. with those 70s. I know a lot of people will probably be happy to see that. Exactly. The spring <laughs> fever in full gear now. There you go. All right. Thank you all so much for joining us. We hope you have a wonderful night.